Hey everybody, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. Over the last few months, I've seen people sharing memes and links about trans women athletes competing on primarily cis women teams. They're worded in a way to get people worked up over having a biological male or genetic male competing with biological genetic females. With the assumption that being assigned male at birth gives athletes some sort of advantage. This just isn't true. Competition requirements mandate low levels of testosterone. The IOC, for example, requires athletes competing on women's teams to have testosterone levels of 10 nanomoles per liter or lower. To get that low, trans women will have to take blockers, reducing how much testosterone their bodies produce. And as testosterone production wanes, muscle mass, bone density, and other typical dimorphic advantages wane. Let's look at four examples that I've seen shared. First, Fallon Fox. She's an MMA fighter. She was in the news a few years ago when she fought Tamika Brantz, who ended up with a concussion, cracked orbital bone, and seven staples. Here's the thing though. Brantz is pound for pound stronger than Fox. Look at them side by side. Fox is four inches taller, but Brantz is way more muscular. In fact, Brent's BMI is 27.3, while Fox's is only 22.5. Fox didn't win because of muscle mass. Maybe she won because she was taller, but she's only 5'7". She's not a massive person. And let's also not forget that Brent's MMA record is horrible. She hasn't won a single match since she lost to Fox. She's on a four-game losing streak, and she's lost twice as many games that she's won. And guess what? Fox lost her against Ashley Evans Smith who surprise surprise is taller than Fox. Second, Hannah Mouncey. She's a handball player playing on the Australian national women's team. People are upset because she's six foot three and 230 pounds, which they think gives her an advantage, except it didn't seem to help a lot having her on the team since they played only fifth out of ten in the 2018 Asian Women's Handball Championship and lost half the games they played. Plus, she got only 23 of the total 99 goals her team scored in those games. And her team finished the, the games with a six goal deficit. Her teammate Sally Patoki, a cis woman, scored 32 goals in those games and led the scoring on three of the four games the team played. Third, Andrea Yearwood. She's a high school track athlete out of Connecticut. She made headlines when she won second place in a 100 meter track meet earlier in 2018. What people sharing news articles about her fail to mention is that she placed only 7th in the 200 meter meet at the same event and 7th in the 400 meter meet at an event the month before and 14th in the 4x100 relay the same month. If she has a biological advantage, why isn't she winning every meet she competes in? Finally, Rachel McKinnon. She's the first trans woman to win a world championship having won the master 35 to 39 200 meter women's sprint at the 2018 UCI Masters Track Cycling World Champions this past October. She also set a world record during the quarterfinals of that event. That is, of course, something that transphobic commentators focus on, except her record was broken that same day by a cis woman. Plus, she came in fourth in the 500 meter event, losing to three cis women. And the person who broke her 200 meter record led in the qualifying heats, and beat McKinnon in the 500 meter event, didn't even compete in the final 200 meter event. Had she, McKinnon might not even have won her gold medal. And speaking of being the first trans woman to win a world championship, if trans women have an athletic advantage over cis women, why has it taken 14 years for a trans woman to win a world championship? The IOC has allowed trans women to compete since 2004. And these are just the four athletes who seem to make the rounds the most. There are similar stories for other trans athletes. They perform well in an event, then everyone criticizes them for their performance, citing an unfair advantage despite their records showing otherwise. This is just plain old transphobia. If you agree with my points, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below why. If you disagree with my points, give me a thumbs down and let me know in the comments below why. Please share my video and subscribe to my channel and I look forward to talking to you again soon.